got a couple of videos left to do on this uh, present series on Calvinism and uh, I want to thank you for your thoughts and comments as we've been going along hope uh, you've been blessed by some of the material which has been presented uh, for those who want to read more on this subject and for those who are more uh, eager to know where the sources have come from I'm going to put a link in the description box to this video it's uh, an article that I wrote back in 2006 I believe and I spent two years researching Calvinism prior to that so I hope you will find that article of interest uh, just a couple of things I want to go over and uh, some things which we haven't mentioned and I uh, say God willing this will be the second to last video uh, Matthew 26 24 when the scripture says the Son of Man goeth as it is written of him that of course is in time via God's foreknowledge but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed it had been good for that man if he had not been born that's man's personal accountability Matthew 26 24 Acts 2 23 him Jesus being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God he have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain again the scripture tells you what's going to happen and then man fills it out he brings it to pass so while the Bible does present this paradoxical view of God and man working together to further God's plan of redemption whether man is aware of this or not see Genesis 50 20 and John 11 50 to 52 what the Bible doesn't support, however, is a strange ideology which is called Calvinism. R.C. Sproul makes the following statement. He says, quote, To be sure, it is possible that Augustine, Aquinas, Luther, Calvin and Edwards could all be wrong on this matter, referring to uh, Reformed theology. So he says it's possible they could be wrong. And I appreciate his honesty there. Uh, interestingly, that Sproul considers Aquinas to be a Christian. Uh, Aquinas was a Roman Catholic a theologian, a philosopher, would be a more accurate uh, account of who he was. And he's also been canonized. That means Catholics can pray to him and other saints for intercessions and so on and so forth. So I don't know why uh, Protestant is quoting the late Mr. Aquinas. Uh, James Bilton says the following about Augustine and you have to remember that Augustine is so linked to Calvinism that you can't separate the two and he says here quote through his doctrine referring to Augustine he has the blood of millions of devout believers in Christ as well as Jews and Muslims on his hands close quote the Catholic Church made an interesting statement in their dictionary from 1960 quote as to Calvin's extraordinary talents there can be no doubt both in Latin and French his writings are a model of clear concise nervous language he had great stories of varied learning at his command his commentaries on scripture still hold a very high place in the esteem of Protestant scholars and his subtlety and power of reasoning fitted him to become the great theologian of the reformed sects. With a vast section of Protestants in Switzerland, Holland, England, Scotland, etc., his institutes possessed almost unlimited authority and were esteemed as the greatest work which had appeared since the days of the Apostles. Close quote. Remarkable quote. Another quote from this 1960 dictionary Quote, its peculiar doctrines, referring to the Institutes, have long since lost their hold on Protestants of the better sort. And its system outrages the principles of natural as well as revealed religion. Close quote. So two different views. The first was quite uh, flattering. The second one was probably a bit more uh, restrained. Who did Christ actually die for? Now, I've already made the case that he died for the sins of the whole world. But uh, Gary North, a Calvinist, 
wrote a book called Dominion and Common Grace. And on page 43, he says that Jesus died for the whole created world, including Satan. I bear that in mind. The scripture tells us in John 1.12 that Jesus came to his own. And his own, like the children of the kingdom, Matthew 8.12, and his own, like Hebrews 10.30, went to hell. See Matthew 8.29. Jesus loved his own until the end, John 13, 1. Jesus laid his life down for his friends, John 15, 13, which were publicans and sinners, Luke 7, 34. Jesus called Judas his friend, Matthew 26, 50. Jesus chose Judas like he chose you, John 6, 70. And he died for false prophets even after redeeming them. 2 Peter 2.1 Luke 16.19 gives you the story of the rich man in hell and the rich man in hell shouts to Abraham father and Abraham says son my son Matthew 13.44 would also be a picture of Jesus buying the field the whole world verse 38 with his own blood so Jesus died for all of nature his crown of thorns Matthew 27, 29 would be a fulfillment of Genesis 3, 18 when he would pay for the sins of all nature, the devil and his animals. This will be seen in Isaiah 11, 6. The wolf shall also dwell with the lamb. This is echoed in Romans 8, 22. But all of the creation groans awaiting the regeneration of Matthew 19, 28. So through the atonement, God has made possible the provision for all mankind that mankind must accept the appropriation if salvation is to be of any benefit Matthew eleven twenty eight. John fifteen sixteen is one of several key verses which Calvinists use to try and prove their theory of God choosing those whom he will before the world began you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever he ask of the Father in my name he may give it in the text, in the uh, context of this scripture, and a verse with other contexts at a pretext, in the context, this is referring to men, apostles. We must also remember that the Lord Jesus did not choose these 12 men before the world began, but while he was here on the earth. And Luke 6, 12 tells us he prayed all night before he was sure who he wanted. Please also remember that in Luke 10, we discover that other apostles, other disciples, uh, were called the 70, and any one of them could have been chosen, but uh, they weren't. Also, from John 6, uh, many chose to reject him of their own free will, and they're called his disciples. It says, many of his disciples walked with him no more. So here you have a picture of people being chosen, being redeemed, if you will and not uh, remaining with him. Next up, we'll look at predestination. Uh, we'll look at uh, John 6. No man can come to the Father unless the Father draw him. Ephesians 1, chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. And uh, hopefully, God willing, that will be the last video in this series of Calvinism. I will do a video or two on James Arminius. Uh, to be truthful, there's not a lot to say about him, but uh, I've been asked to do something on him, and I will, just to try and uh, make this as broad and as uh, balanced as I can do. But uh, as always, appreciate your thoughts on this, and uh, hopefully these videos have answered your questions. And if they haven't, then I apologise, and hopefully, God willing, the last video will finish this off. So thank you, and God bless.